So how do you feel today to be here receiving an honorary degree from the University of Warwick? I feel like the scarecrow in The Wizard of Oz. Do you remember that? Yeah. I feel like like somebody has said, yeah, you do have a brain, and here's, here's a certificate to prove it. I'm so happy, though. Oh. I'm so happy. This is quite surreal. Well, you definitely do have a brain, and you've worked really hard to get to where you are now as an actor. So tell me about your journey to get to where you are. I, so I grew up on a council estate in Cardiff, I went to the local primary school and the local comprehensive school. I did very badly at my O-levels because I was grieving my mum's death a couple of years before still. And I was, uh, and, then, and then did even worse at my A-levels to the point that I, uh, I dropped one of the three at the end of the first year. And then Christmas of the second year, so the Christmas before sitting uh, the French and music I was left with then. Um, I, I got a place at what is now the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama and, and I was given a, a, a full grant. A, grants were still possible and B, every penny of it was going to be paid by South Glamorgan Education Authority. Everything, because my dad had no money. To study an acting diploma, it wasn't even a degree in acting. And it wasn't even dependent, uh, dependent on my A-levels. Those days are well and truly gone well and truly gone and uh, and I remember getting the grant or getting the place and then getting the grant and then going back and checking what the place was dependent on and then going back and checking what the grant was depending on or doing all this at 17 by myself um, and are you sure I've got the place and I don't need any more exams are you sure I've got the grant and I don't need any more exams and because both parties said yes I decided that Christmas not to go back to school. Again, by myself, didn't discuss it with my dad at all. I wouldn't recommend that because then when I did get to drama school, I felt like a dunce. I felt, because everyone, but this is terrible word to use, I felt that everyone else was really bright because they were all discussing what A-levels they'd got or they'd, they'd been to university and, and then come to drama school or whatever it was. I felt like the person that knew nothing, even though I'd been reading... Balzac in French and, you know, and, and sight reading Bach and suddenly I felt, because I didn't have proof, didn't have any proof that I knew any of this stuff and I wasn't um, confident enough to just start talking in French to the one French student we had, even though I could have, because I didn't have the certificate. But what I did have was a desire to earn my living from acting and that was quite specific. I wanted to earn my living from acting. I didn't have a desire to be famous. I wanted to act as I had been at youth theatre for like 10 years before. It's amazing to me to know that it's Shakespeare who's brought me here through all the things I've done, the, you know, the TV stuff, the other plays. It's not, it's not surprising when I, when I look at my CV that it's Shakespeare, but when I think about where I started out, my relationship with those plays to this point, that's quite extraordinary, mm. really, because I had closed that door for myself, you know. It's, it's hard enough having other people close doors on you, but when you close them yourself and box yourself into a corner, that's not good at all. No. And that's sort of what I'd done. I didn't know what kind of acting I would do. All I really knew was musicals and the odd play, so I thought I'd probably do musicals. Um, Shakespeare didn't register at all. I hadn't... I hadn't liked Shakespeare, hadn't engaged with it at school, really didn't. We went to see Roger Rees's Hamlet at, at the RSC and I was, I think I slept through it, I was so bored. And so no offence to Roger Rees, I just didn't engage with Shakespeare. And then when I got to drama school I didn't engage with Shakespeare. And, um, and I, I, I mentioned this in, in the speech I'm going to make, that, that I just felt I would never work in that domain and I didn't really see the point. But what do you know? We had a terrific teacher, terrific in that he was quite regimental about how he taught his Shakespeare, which they don't do now, which is a shame because he was, he was so regimented that um, his way of teaching, it was like the, the Shakespearean equivalent of learning to just sit and do your times tables by rote. De dum de dum de dum de dum de dum. 
dum de dum de dum de dum de dum de dum de dum and we were like, oh, this is so ridiculous. But actually, it, he drummed the rhythm into us, so we then didn't have to think about it. It stood me in such good stead, that, that training, that drilling. I love the, the vocabulary it gives me. I love the freedom. I love, the, I love playing people who have words at their command in a way that I don't. I love the turn of phrase that they have. And there was so much about it. It was, so yeah, suddenly I thought, yeah, I, I, I do. I do kind of like Shakespeare. And I think I'm getting better and better at it. Well, you mentioned your CV. It's going to be pretty impressive. I know you've got Holby City, you've got Hermione and Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Yes, a year on stage as Hermione. And see, another thing, you know, of all the things, if you'd said to me, you write down 100 parts you think you might play, Hermione would not have been one of them. No. <laughs> I mean, well, maybe not until, it's funny, not until um, my dear friend, uh, sweetheart, Noma de Mizrani played Hermione, and then my husband said, I think you will play Hermione. And even then I said, no. He said, yeah, I think you will. And then I took over from him. Um, but that was not on my radar at all. I know. And, I, and yeah, and it's been, the last few years have been extraordinary for things I thought I would never do within the acting world. So then I stepped into the wizarding world. That was, <laughs> that was not on my radar. I know. And, and... Doctor Who with David Tennant and... Tell me about Doctor Who as well, because you actually saved the day. You saved his skin. Yes. So, well, tell me about that. What was it like to play that part? Was, oh, that was such a great gig, because it's like a little chamber piece. It's a play. You know, you could do midnight, you could do on stage, because it's, it's pretty much all on one set. Um, and you never see the forces of evil that are outside, so you don't need people in monster suits um, but you could do that too and there's a pressure with um, particularly with that script there was a pressure to get all those words out because David was always brilliant at always on his lines and you know and his his chops were moving very quickly through that part you know he was getting his, his tongue around some very difficult complicated phrases so you never wanted to be the person that messed up when he had spent hours not messing up for anybody else. You never, when it, when the, the, when it was his shot, when it was his close up, you did not want to, your one word to be the one word you got wrong so that he would have to do his whole sequence again. <laughs> I mean. Mm -hmm. um, so there was always this real pressure whenever, whenever the shot came around to Dave because we knew how busy he was and how much he was carrying. I'd spend the, the whole scene just going, my line, my line, my line, my line. <laughs> I think you can kind of see the fear in my eyes. <laughs> oh, um, but I love that, and I love that we got to um, Leslie Sharp and I got uh, to wear harnesses and be and be. I shouldn't give it all in case people haven't seen it, but anyway, yes. Yeah, so it was great fun because she's not very likeable. I sort of like those characters who aren't very likeable and then and then they, either you you find out why they're not very likeable or they do something wonderful and then you go, oh, okay, they're not so bad. They redeem themselves. Yes. <laughs> um, and obviously you can hear the organ music. There's going to be graduates filling into the hall now. What yes. advice do you have for people graduating alongside you today? I end my speech with this and the advice I have for, for people graduating today is to re-examine all the things you think you don't like, all the things you loathe, all the things you would say you hate. Because those things, or one of those things, might be the very thing that propels you forwards. Might be the thing that in 30 years time gives you as great an achievement as the one you quite rightly feel and have today. Don't dismiss anything. You might be right. You might be right to hate it. You might be right to loathe it. But just keep re-examining all the way along. Just keep reassessing. Allow yourself to change your mind. Amazing. Thank you very much.